Wednesday, and you know what that means. New Week of Old Comics. This week we're going to talk about comics from Black Crown, Steve Purcell, and Robert Crumb. Take it away! So starting off today, we're going to look at uh, the new work by Philip Bond. Um, it's from the Black Crown imprint over at IDW, which we'll talk about more in a second. Um, David Barnett wrote it, Philip Bond doing the main story pencils, Liz Prince doing the art on the uh, backup stories. Um, I'm a big fan of Philip Bond. If you've seen the channel before, you know I've talked about him before. Um, what I like about the way Philip Bond uh, does his sequential art is how clean it is. Just everything is very vivid, very clear of what's going on. I, I love that. Which is, I mean, it's interesting to see an artist that is different than yourself. You know, my work that I do. Oh no. Here he goes talking about himself again. Is very frantic. I try to have like a frantic energy. It's very scribbly. Where Philip Bond's work, who which I, I just adore. And you know, it's weird because often when you adore someone's artwork or you're really a big fan of someone's artwork, in some way you're influenced or, or, or emulate them and it's just, I, I don't even know what of his art is, is influential to me, like what aspect of it. I think about it a lot. Well, I thought about it a lot while reading this. It's just so much of the art is just on point. Here's the backup by this prince. I found the story okay. I mean, it's it's not bad. It's just I don't think it was for me. And I think it kind of leaves off in a place where... This is great. It leaves off in a place where you, it leaves you wanting more. But since uh, the Black Crown imprint is done at uh, IDW, I believe. Except for, I think, a few more books coming out. Um, it's, it'll kind of, the story will never kind of be concluded as far as I know. Um, you know, it's a La Femme Nikita kind of story. Female assassin kind of story, but it's a bit fun, more fun. Wacky, got gorillas and stuff in it. I mean, it, all the, I, all the uh, Black Crown books have a, like a great aesthetic. That is awesome. I can't explain how awesome this cover here is. I mean, it, it says, I think it says something about kind of the story, like it makes sense for the story. And it also just looks cool. But yeah, so I guess Black Crown is done, which is a shame. I, I think I'm gonna try and collect all the trades but they put out a book of the black crown quarterlies that came out i had two three and four and then couldn't find one so i ended up just buying the the collection of all the um, compendiums of comics and culture i think it was comics culture and cool i guess they changed that i think i remember Philip Bond designed the logo too. Uh, this is uh, Shelley Bond's imprint at IDW, who is married to Philip Bond. Philip Bond's married to her. And I just loved it. I thought it was the coolest shit. Look at this awesome Philip Bond artwork. Goth kids. I mean, I don't know how successful this was, because I feel like... Like, if you came from, like, an 80s or 90s subculture, like, punk or goth, like, this would click with you. This Not just because the artwork and the characters here, but kind of the whole package. Very much has, like, a goth punk, almost zine aesthetic. Um, 
Um, Shelly Bond, of course, is the the uh, former editor over at Vertigo, famous editor. Um, she has a great aesthetic to what she puts together. Um, great eye for talent. She brought Nick Darrington back into comics by introducing him to uh, Gerard Way when he was doing his Young Animal imprint. Thank God for that, because Nick Darrington is killing it right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly who this was for and who it would appeal to other than someone like myself. I mean, we don't have subcultures really anymore. We just have kind of this monoculture. So how well something that has this its own aesthetic that maybe speaks to a... subculture context. Kid the bottom me. Tess Fowler's artwork's really great too. I have that book. We'll talk about that on some other day. So maybe we'll look at Peter Milligan's stuff or Tess Fowler's work. But I thought this was really cool and I was kind of sad to see it go. But I'm definitely going to collect I think all of the Black Crown stuff. They got a book coming out called Hey Amateur. That's like I collect all, not all, but I like to collect kind of, you know, how to books on comics. And I'm just interested to see kind of the Black Crown aesthetic applied to like a Hey To book. The book's called uh, yeah, Hey Amateur. And uh, I look forward to that coming out. I think it's November. Uh, next, we're going to look at. Sam and Max by Steve Purcell. This is Surf on the Highway. This supposedly has all of the Sam and Max comics produced from the late 80s to the web comics. Um, it, Sam and Max is so good. So good. I mean, if you like cartooning, it's just great. The characters are great. I mean, it, you know, it's very much cartoonish, but the characters are very morally gray kind of their sense of right and wrong is a little off and that's kind of what makes the uh, stories interesting because they're not things don't play out like they would in like a normal comic strip um, the characters are both crazy I don't mean that figuratively I mean meaning like literally like they're the characters are Sam and Max are both off and uh, you kind of couple that with this like moral ambiguity and it just it's just a crazy ride I was first exposed to Sam and Max from the LucasArts game back in the day and uh, I kind of got back into it when they started doing the Telltale games, which were really good. Third one's not so good, but the first two I really enjoyed. Um, it's just a tone that was just perfect. It's I mean, the only thing I can kind of compare it to is maybe like a touch of Roger Rabbit, a touch of Milk and Cheese. Um, Steve Purcell went on to work at Pixar, so he's not really doing comics anymore but I mean it's if you look if you want to know about Steve's pedigree that's that's that says something Pixar they hire a lot of great talent he was involved I, I guess in cars and and uh, brave and directed some shorts for them and voiced some stuff just all around talent um, I wish he would come back to him. Sam and Max. The way he spots blacks is awesome. It just makes everything just a pleasure to look at. 
Even color stuff. There's kind of some color stuff he did here in the back. Stuff from the 90s. Very good. There was a cartoon, but I never saw it. I'd be interested to see it. I heard they kind of, you know, they did away with the, the, some of the swearing and the the more kind of adult themes, but. I mean, we've lost them to Pixar, so. Who knows when we'll see Sam and Max again. But I adore Sam and Max. It's just one of those perfect recipes. So finally, we're just going to look at a, this is kind of curiosity, it's a Kafka biography illustrated by Robert Crumb. Now, interesting story how I came across this, I was living on South Beach at the time and I went to the Wolfsonian Museum that's there and the girl working at the desk was reading this book and I, the words Kafka jumped off, jumped out to me and, I, you know, being a 20 year old goth kid at the time, you know, Franz Kafka is is uh you know up my alley in my wheelhouse for sure so i went up to the girl and i asked her what she was reading she showed me and i saw you know by our crumb and i just kind of flipped my my lid like this is a uh a kafka a book about kafka illustrated by her crumb it's you know i didn't know it existed and i just i i asked her where she got it and she told me that if i came back the next day she would just give it to me. She, she was almost done reading it, and she'd just give it to me. And uh, I offered to pay her for it. She was like, no. So, uh, wherever you are, girl gave me this book. Just want to thank you, because it's awesome. It's some really good Robert Crumb stuff. The topic appeals to me kind of it does kind of not full versions but kind of short versions of the stories in comic form man that's I mean can you ask for anything more I know it sounds silly but Crumb's work's got a lot of the scribbly frantic energy that I kind of l like I think his his lines are more composed than mine and I don't know if, if my lines are going to become more composed but like I'm not a crosshatch guy and Crumbs a lot of, does a lot of crosshatching metamorphosis of course It's just great illustrations. If you're one of those people who have an issue with Robert Crumb, I understand. Um, if you can't separate the art from the artist, I think that's a struggle. Everyone has to kind of decide where they where they uh, land with that. Uh, if you choose not to understand his intent, you know also. That's that's on you. So I understand. It's no hate, but I'm a fan of Robert Crumb. You know, I, I can't help it. It's good shit. It's great cartoony. And you know, it it like look at this. Like that is such a Robert Crumb kind of pose for a character to be sitting in. You, you, when you see his work, you know it's him. You know. And he has a style which he can just draw pretty much draw anything in that stuff. That's awesome. But yeah, I, this is a I mean a kitchen sink press book. Um, 
kind of one of my favorite books. So I don't know if you can track it down. It's definitely worth tracking down. And uh, I'll see you next week. Um, if you want to check out my Twitter, um, at Plague Child, or Octopus Avenue on Instagram, I'm always posting uh, doodles and and uh, panels from my graphic novel. So check it out. Tonight's program has been brought to you by 